Good morning, First Baptist Enterprise. Uh, this is Clegg Snipes. Um, I teach a class with Michael Walters. And um, this morning we're going to be looking at uh, Unit 20, Session 3. And the title is John Points to Jesus. Um, we're going to look at three, three points. Uh, Jesus is the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the groom who prompts great rejoicing in his friends. And Jesus is the son who gives eternal life to those who believe. Uh, to summarize this, this session, you know, John the Baptist's role uh, was to prepare the way for the Messiah. And once Jesus was identified as the, as the Messiah at his baptism, John did not shy away from pointing others to Christ. He recognized that pointing people to Christ wasn't just a one-time thing. He rejoiced at the growing prominence of Jesus' ministry declaring that eternal life is found in Jesus, uh, the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. Uh, John exemplified how true worship leads us to lift up Christ, not ourselves um, or our own platforms, and how great joy can be found as we point others to Christ. So to look at the first point um, that we're going to be starting on is in, uh, on page 80 in your book is uh, John 1, 29-34. Um, this, this is titled, Jesus is the Lamb Who Takes Away the Sin of the World. Um, and God's Word reads this, The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. Uh, and John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, um, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is uh, the Son of God. So the people to whom John was preaching were very familiar you know, with the role that, uh, that sheep and animals played in the temporary atonement for their sin. Uh, with every sacrifice, uh, the people were reminded that the you know, punishment for sin is death. It talks about that in Romans 6, uh, verse 23. Each family unit was required to offer sacrifices to atone for their sin, uh, but each payment was temporary. Um, and the sacrifices had to be made over and over again. Um, that is, until Jesus' final sacrifice arrived. Um, whereas the Old Testament uh, sacrifices were temporary and incomplete, Jesus was the perfect Lamb of God who bore in his death the totality of the penalty of sin, uh, offering a permanent solution to the punishment for and reality of sin. But as a result, we no longer have to offer regular sacrifices to atone for our sins. Jesus took, took care of it um, on our behalf. Uh, the gift of the gospel is one that we can never earn or deserve, and yet we have the privilege of receiving it by faith in Jesus. Uh, there's a fill in, the fill in the blank on page 80 that says here, uh, Christ has sacrificed. So unlike the sacrificial system of the Old Testament, whose sacrifices were unable to take away sin, Christ's sacrifice on the cross was able to permanently, once and for all, take away sins. So unable and permanently. Um, before we were in Christ by faith, sin left us legally condemned before God, spiritually trapped in a state of both guilt and death. The Old Testament sacrifices did not have the power to change hearts or to permanently remove the penalty and the power of sin. Uh, but Jesus, as the perfect Lamb of God, removed both through his crucifixion and resurrection. Because of our union with the risen Christ uh, and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, Sin's penalty and power are gone. There is no condemnation for who we are in Christ Jesus. We have received a new course of life in Christ, enabling us to walk by the Spirit through His power that now lives within us. Um, and that, that's in Romans 8, verses 1 through 4. Um, to, to jump over to point 2 here um, in John chapter 3, verse 25 through 30, uh, it's titled, Jesus is the groom who prompts great rejoicing in his friends. So in God's word reads this. Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, 
He who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you, you bore witness, look, he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, A person cannot receive, receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear, wit, bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have, found, have been sent before him. The one who has had the bride is the bridegroom, the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. John's disciples you know, were, were confused at this. Um, they were concerned with John's popularity uh, decreasing because they saw Jesus, Jesus as competition. Uh, they were concerned that their influence would dec decrease as people flocked to Jesus uh, instead of to John. Uh, but they did not recognize who Jesus was, but John the Baptist did. Um, John knew that he didn't have the power to bring ultimate joy and satisfaction to people. He couldn't save, he could not save people from their sin, but he could point to the one who, who, who can. Um, as with John the Baptist, uh, the same holds true for us. When we recognize who Jesus is, it gives us clarity about our identity and our role in his, in his story. Um, there's a question here. It says, what are some reasons why we may struggle to make much of Christ and less of ourselves? Um, you know, we don't know him, you know, maybe we, maybe we don't know him by faith. We don't know him as well as we should because we don't spend time in the word, the word of God and praying. Uh, we have prideful hearts. Um, that enjoy attention and aff affirmation of other things. So we seek those things for ourselves instead of putting the spotlight on Jesus. Uh, we find it awkward to praise Jesus in the presence of others. Um, those are just a few things to kind of think about about that question. But, uh, you know, like a good groomsman, you know, it says here in the book, John was not threatened by the celebration of the groom. He was absolutely delighted. Well, why? Because he knew who Jesus is. And uh, he wanted nothing more than for Jesus to be lifted up so that uh, others could have the privilege of knowing him too and joining with his bride, the church. Um, John would have to decrease decrease in order to lift up Jesus. And he was honored to do so. Um, here we see a really important principle. True worship of Jesus prompts us to promote Jesus, not ourselves. <clears throat> So for our hearts to remain in a posture of humility, where we delight to decrease so that Jesus can increase, we must stay in a posture of worship. We must stay in a place where we recognize the true blessings found in the gospel, uh, which will lead us to rejoice when others also experience the blessings of the gospel and, uh, and join the church, the bride of Christ, as we await the return of, uh, of the groom. Uh, there's a three fill in the blanks here. Uh, the bride of Christ. So the church is described as the bride of Christ, faithfully waiting for the day when Christ will return and heaven and earth will be one, made up of all believers from all tongues and nations. The church is the bride that Christ redeemed. So church, believers, redeemed. <clears throat> to swap over to uh, point three, um, in John chapter three, verse 31 through 36, um, our last point here is Jesus is the son who gives eternal life to those who believe. And God's word says this, he who comes from above is above all. Uh, he who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God for he gives the spirit without measure. The father loves the son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Um, so as Christians, we should, you know, we should take time to recognize that um, what we have been saved from and embracing what we have been saved to. Uh, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Um, talked about that in Romans 8, uh, verse 1. Uh, for the believer, you know, God's wrath fell upon Jesus on the cross. All that remains now is the love and grace of God in the gift of eternal life with him forever. Um, so as we, you know, 
as we share the gospel with others, our heart's motivation should be just like Jesus when he came to earth the first time to offer you know, life, not condemnation. Uh, we must not get caught up with talking about everything God condemns and fail to talk about what, is, uh, what it is that God is giving us in the gospel, um, eternal life. Uh, that's the that's the ultimate uh, you know that's the ultimate that's what we're that's what we're ultimately you know, living here for is to spread the news of Christ so that others may have eternal life with our heavenly Father. Um, so when when it, when it you know when it comes to responding to Christ, the Bible is clear in passages such as this one that there are two uh, two options: um, eternal life or eternal judgment. You are either alive in Christ or dead in sin. Uh, you are either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. Uh, you are either in Christ or you are not in Christ. Jesus said plainly that he is the only way uh, we can get to the Father, uh, John 14, 6. In this area, you know, there's no, there's no you know, middle ground. Uh, either we are on a path that leads to death or we get to receive eternal life. Um, and that eternal life is uh, one of complete abundance and uh, one where we get to experience the Spirit without limits. Um, while it's tempting for us to think um, about the sense of eternal judgment in hell as if we were gray, it is not. To be fair, you know, there are many issues we encounter in life that are gray, fuzzy, and unclear. But the fate of those who reject Jesus throughout the entirety of their lives is not one of them. Uh, the eternal life we receive through Christ is an abundant life, both here in this life and in the one to come. Uh, but the opposite is true for those without Christ. Um, unbelievers will receive the fullness of God's wrath against sin and eternal judgment uh, that, and that forever in hell, which is described as a lake of fire and a second death. It talks about that in Revelation 20, verses 10 through 15. <clears throat> um, to, <clears throat> to sum this, you know, these three points up, the three points up, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, we do not serve a God who withholds from his children. We are, while <clears throat> when we are in Christ, we get all the blessings promised to the Son because we are in him. Uh, God has given all things into Jesus' hands, and when we are in Christ, we get access to these things as well. We have to be careful not to think about abundant eternal life in earthly terms. Following Christ doesn't exempt us from hardships in this life. Um, the abundant life we receive through Christ is so much greater than anything the world could offer. Um, and it can't be measured through earthly standards. Uh, life through Christ means we get, you know, God himself. He is the true source and prize of the abundant life we desire. Um, you know, one thing that kind of hit me is, um, you know, as, as Christians, as people here on earth, you know, we... You know, it, it, it does not exempt us from hardships in life. I mean, think about what we're going through with the, um, you know, coronavirus and the economy. Um, there's a lot of people that are struggling and hurting, you know, loss of jobs and people are sick. Um, and, uh, you know, the body of Christ, we're to be there for, for, for everybody to, uh, to share, you know, what keeps us so... Positive and faithful is 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 because what you know God did for us through His Son Jesus Christ. Uh, we're to be the shining light of the world and to um, be that uh, be like be that that spotlight that light that 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 others can see in us and we can get an opportunity to share Christ with others and what He has done for us ultimately. Um, to um, <clears throat> I know there are a few excuse me a few um, daily study guides that you could look at uh, moving forward in your book. Um, there's some questions here. You know, how will you respond in faith to Jesus, the Lamb of God, the groom who gave his life for his church and the Son of God? What are some ways your group uh, church can decrease so Jesus can increase among you and in your community? And how will you point others to Christ with a posture of joy and hum humility this week? Um, those are just a few of a uh, few some questions in your book to kind of think about. Um, but I hope, um, uh, hope you all enjoyed the, the this lesson and, um, hope everybody has a great rest of the weekend and a great week coming up. Um, I'm going to, uh, close this in prayer and, uh, 
I'll move on. Um, but Father, we just um, thank you for providing your son, um, Jesus as the Lamb of God, uh, who takes away our sin uh, because, um, you know, he, you know, he gives us the Holy Spirit and, uh, you know, and uh, we receive eternal life. Um, uh, as those spared from your wrath, make us into joyful friends like John the Baptist and uh, happy to point others to you um, in our celebration of the gospel. Um, we just uh, thank you for your many blessings. We, we thank you for our church and the leaders, our pastors, and uh, uh, we just, we have so much to be thankful for. Uh, please be with everybody during these times and uh, help us to stay positive and to stay in your word and to uh, reflect on you. Uh, please forgive us for our sins and we, when we have failed you. We love you and thank you. And we want to thank Jesus Christ.